Bro, men are so stupid. And I'm talking about myself. You know, new today, it was gonna snow. Thought maybe we could drive. Woke up in the morning and was like, I'm not driving in this. You gotta be crazy. Instead, I'm gonna drag my daughter in her sled all the way to daycare. It's a few kilometers, whatever. No big deal. It'll be a nice opportunity for like another workout after the Peloton this morning. Pissed off because we were like later than I wanted to leave. So I knew I was going to be late getting to daycare. So I knew I was going to be late getting home and starting the stream. Walked, uh, walked her to daycare, huffing and puffing the whole way. Dropped her off at daycare, walked back. It was like, oh, it's freaking 9.30. I'm so annoyed with myself for being late. Just annoyed with the day. Threw the sled outside to uh, make sure that it melted so I could pick her up from daycare at like, you know, 4.30 or whatever. Closed the door before moving my hand out of the way. Crushed my thumb between the, the hinge and the door. Was immediately like, fuck. <laughs> that, was, uh, that was about 18 minutes ago. I, I don't think it's broken. I, I, you're going to laugh because of the extended food poisoning bit. Which is not a bit, it was my life. But I, I really don't exaggerate industries. If anything, I actually kind of understate what's going on. I, I can show you the thumb, okay? It's all taped up. This is after having compressed it for a little bit and, and put a little Band-Aid underneath the gauze. And I can still bend it, which is, I think, a great sign. But definitely, like, it was bleeding like a son of a gun. And the, the bottom of the nail turned, like, completely white. So I think that's gonna be an interesting kind of narrative arc to follow over the next day. <laughs> uh, which is gonna be interesting. You, I think you can tell also, maybe you can't, but I got, like, I have adrenaline in my, in my voice. Like, I'm, still, I'm a little shaky, but not as, not as shaky as I was, like, you know, 15 minutes ago, let me put it that way. But check it out. I got a muffin. Like, it's, it's not 100%. Like, if, if this was VATS, you would look at my thumb and you would be like, this is not at 100% uh, condition. But I really, the, the, at first I was like, it's broken. The more I, uh, the more I sit here and, and, and sort of like appraise it, it's not broken. It's it's a little fucked up, but it's not broken. I can move it. I can bend it. There's not extreme pain. I don't think I'm in um, shock right now. <laughs> I, don't th I don't think I'm in shock. I don't think that there was to that extent. But I definitely think that this hand is going to be fucked up, dude. <laughs> I think it's going to be... And this hand is gonna be fucked up for like just a little bit, but that's okay. Why were you in a car? I thought you took the sled. It's the door to my house. How is I got 3,000 cc's of adrenaline pumping through my brain. I can keep the story straight. What's your, you're just sitting down at your PC. What's your excuse? I'm telling you sincerely, I don't need to go to the hospital. I know that's like, how, it, it, just think of the cognitive dissonance that we've created in this community where people are like, and now over exaggerated the food poisoning arc where he went to the hospital three times, but also he hurt his thumb. He needs to go to the hospital. It's just male bravado keeping him at home. You, you, you can't hold these opposing facts in your head at the same time and assume that they're both true. If it gets fucked up, if the pain becomes unbearable, if the wound starts to smell like almonds, I will, um, I will go to the hospital and I'll sit there for 12 hours or whatever. All right, I'm back. I took one extra strength Tylenol. Hurts a little bit. It does hurt a little bit, but I think it's... Just give it some time. Should take some Motrin instead? Maybe I'll just head out to the pharmacy real quick. Just pop down to the local apothecary. Is it throbbing? Oh, it is. Ba-bum, ba-bum, ba-bum. Shit sounds like Miles Teller in... Uh, Whiplash. And I have to acknowledge, it's 
I like obviously it's my own fault, but it's so my like I was 31 minutes late. I told people I was gonna be 30 minutes late. Well, you just go slow. Don't don't start taking shortcuts that lead to injuries like this. So unnecessary. Were there mitigating circumstances? Yeah. I would have loved to have left the house 20 minutes earlier, but you know, that's that's reality, man. It is what it is. It's a good learning lesson, at least. What kind of muffin is it? It's a tasty muffin. That's all you need to know. What color is your thumbnail? I don't know. And I'm going to keep it that way. <laughs> I don't know. I'm Right now, I'm choosing not to think about a couple of things. Even just by saying them, I'm creating a, a barrier. And I'm choosing not to, to ponder the future. I'm choosing not to ponder what it's going to feel like when I take the gauze off. I'm choosing not to ponder what it's going to feel like tomorrow. And I'm choosing not to ponder, although this one's going to come to a head a little bit faster. Um, I'm choosing not to ponder how I'm going to drag my child three kilometers home in the sled from daycare as well. That's, that's the one that's really uh, sitting close to the front of mind right now. But I think, I think I'm just going to use the other fucking hand, man. Let's get her an Uber. What, an Uber with cross-country skis instead of tires? I don't think you, you understand the inputs into the system right now. I don't think you, you understand the inputs into the system right now. Hold on, this one's going to feel good. You know what? Before we do the audit, or before we do the ban, let's just do the audit. You've already been banned once and then saved? What, that you were banned 13 days ago by a mod and then I unbanned you? Which means you must have had an unban request that was like, hey, I'm sorry, I won't do it again. Wait, wait, you're an, oh, call, don't tell me that you're the guy who was like, oh, my brother was on my phone. Can't wait until SAP is over. No hate, just not my kind of game, y'all. That's two days ago. Then today... Holy shit, is he still whining? <laughs> Who, th 11 days ago. Who else is pumped for Hades 2 and Earthblade? Are you serious? This is the most... Uh, you're, you're, you're vacillating between bad chest and pure hatred. Game is bad. Spire better. Spire better. Sounds like House from New Vegas. Okay, Jerry Seinfeld. Who asked? The man, the myth, the legend. I can't wait until these battle royales go out of style. The, the day before, hey everybody, what's up, y'all? What are you doing? You gotta get a handle on your own emotional homeostasis, man. It's like, I don't know who you are day to day. Maybe you're really, maybe the hater is him and, and it's his brother who's typing the, the nice stuff. This is crazy, man. Hold on, I, I hit full refresh on the page instead of just refreshing the audit. They've left chat. They, I, didn't, I didn't even ban them. They just left. He typed bah ha ha and closed the tab. He literally typed bah ha ha like he's from Cave Story or something like that and then left. <laughs> bah ha ha. Oh, shit. Close the tab. Get the fuck out of here. Holy cow. All right. I'm going to. Is there a way to monitor user? I just want to. I want to put them on the manage suspicious user. I'm just going to put you on the monitor link. You will be monitored as a suspicious user. Okay, that's just like, listen, most people don't believe in second chances these days. I'm actually tossing you a third chance, but you're on like probation, okay? If you don't care, then that's fine. Just, just leave. But for right now, you're on probation. I don't have a brother. Okay, well then what was your on ban request? Is there a way for me to go back and see that? What did you get timed out for anyway? Let's see, let's go back to December 7th here. It must have been bad. It's been scrubbed from the permanent record. It's good. Honestly, it's a good distraction from the thumb. It is a great distraction from the thumb. I never made an on-ban request. I was never aware of being banned. I think we have our wires crossed here, sir. This and sap, I'm out for today's stream. Enjoy, folks. One hour later. Is this on Switch Online? <laughs> oh, come on. Sorry. I'm Listen, I'm not trying to own you. I'm just literally, I'm, I'm reading the messages, okay? Like, I'm just, I'm reading the messages in, like, canonical order, and it's telling the narrative. <laughs> it's building a narrative by itself. I can't wait until Isaac gets changed out for something else. Well, then it happened, and now you're mad about Sap, man. It's crazy. 
What's the appeal of Isaac over something like Gungeon? Is Isaac harder or easier than Gungeon? Imagine ever eating fast food. Can't wait for more Elden Ring. This chat is full of Cheeto eating neckbeards. Haha. Ha. This game is painful to watch. All politicians are criminals. <laughs> Oh, man, this is, you know, and, and I mean this with sincerity. This is just what I needed right now. I understand that this is, it might seem mean-spirited. I think everybody's having a good time. I'm not going to ban you. I'm still going to leave you as a suspicious user, but it's okay. We can, we can make it back, okay? We can make it back. I'm sort of just waiting for, like, the adrenaline to leave my body, but it hasn't happened yet. But if I wasn't live right now, I'd just be walking around like in a circle in my house. So that's okay. You know, like when you stub your toe, I stubbed my toe like two days ago when the baby was napping, but I wasn't able to experience the pain because the, where, the place where I stubbed it was right outside of her room. Oh, Tomo, you're gonna throw up in the corner of my office. Okay, let me take a bite of this muffin. I'll clean that up and then we'll, uh, then we'll get started with React Court. Can you guys hear that? It was not just foam. You guys ever see Falling Down? Starring Michael Douglas? <laughs> I, you might think this is a scary bit. Because it is about a man who... Oh, my, I dropped my muffin on the ground. <laughs> oh, man. That's so good. I'm sorry. I'm going to eat it anyway. But I... Uh, you might think this is a cursed bit because it's a man. It's a movie about a man who gets stuck in traffic, and that's like the last domino, or I guess it's the first domino to fall. And the, uh, you know, he goes on a rampage. Basically, he ends up shooting the rocket launcher into the L.A. sewers. He takes some hostages. He, you know, gets involved in some violence against some other guys who are bad. It's kind of like an anti-hero, but also he's a bad guy situation. But like the the, I'm actually like the flip side right now. I was like annoyed when I was dragging the sled. And then I was annoyed with myself with the thumb injury. And then when Tomo threw up, I thought it was just very funny. And then I dropped my muffin on the floor and I thought it was hilarious. The more, uh, the, the more small indignities that are happening to me, I think the funnier it is. I'm, you're absolutely right. I'm falling up. I'm falling up. I might volunteer. After work today, I might volunteer. I'll head down to the soup kitchen. I can ladle with my strong hand. I really feel like you got to laugh. Like if we were in planes, trains, and automobiles, you know, there's, there's two kinds of people in the world. There's Steve Martins and then there's John Candy's. I think I would start as a Steve Martin and by the end, I would be John Candy. Which, by the way, is kind of the arc that happens to Steve Martin in the movie. But anyway... I am becoming one of the Three Stooges. Can I tell you how, how comical it is? And I, I don't know if, if this is men or it's just me or people like me. First thought I had when I slammed my thumb into the door hinge was, ah, crap, you know, but not those words. Second thought I had was, well, you know, like fucking 90 years ago, granddad was out there in the, the Battle of the Bulge bullets whizzing over his head like artillery shells dropping down 50 feet away from him he's eating like cold beans out of a can or something like that he, you think he was complaining no he was writing letters back to my grandma with his weak hand going like everything's pogged out here don't worry about me legit my my first my well my second thought was hey at least i'm not like in the shit right now at least i'm not in vietnam <laughs> at least I'm not <laughs> at least I'm not beset on all sides by hostile armies my brother in Christ the one the hundred and first were endlessly bitching about their fight and they were right to yeah but like it could always be worse like at least they weren't in the 102nd right well I feel like most people go oh no one has it as hard as me like I wanted uh, a hamburger but they served me a hamburger patty on sourdough bread nobody knows what it's like to be me there's something, and I don't know if this was given to me by my parents or culture or whatever, but like when I'm, the, the greater the suffering that I have, the more I'm like, I deserve this. Thank you for not making it worse. At least I didn't, at least I didn't break my thumb probably. At least I didn't sever it 
And even if I did sever it, I still got another one, you know? And even if I lost the other one, people make do, right? There's something, I don't know. I don't know if it's, I think it's my mom. My mom, she's a glass half full kind of, kind of person for sure. They could just reattach it. Yeah, be, I think it'd be pretty bad for my, um, for my war zone career though. By the way, here's a text from my mom. If you think it's broken and needs to be set, don't leave it too long. It will heal really badly and call it and cause arthritis. Take it from an old person, open parentheses, your dad. <laughs> oh, man. Ha ha. Oops, all caps. Ha ha. I think it's just gonna hurt like a you know what. For a while. I can feel, is it, what, what is it that's, that causes pain relief? What's the neurotransmitter? I can feel my body's natural antihistamines flooding the, flooding my brain right now. I feel good, man. I feel, I feel better than I did when I woke up. <laughs> and I am awake. Woo! Kicks like a mule with his balls wrapped in duct tape. They're called cytokines. That's why you need to take COX inhibitors. Excuse me, are you trying to <laughs> you trying to ligma me in my uh, in my fucked up state right now? COX inhibitors. Also, where the hell do you guys live that you just like live in a pharmacy? I said I was gonna take one Tylenol. People were like, no, don't take one Tylenol. Take uh, half a Motrin and then like snort up uh, an Aleve and put it up your asshole. Like how many how many painkillers do you keep in your house? I have, I have Tylenol and children's Tylenol. That's it. That's all I got, man. I'm a registered nurse? Okay, well, thank you for everything you do for society. Sorry about all the fucked up stuff I said about the medical system, even though much of it was not directed towards the people involved at the front lines, like nurses and doctors and nurse practitioners and it, it, even the admin staff, most of it was just directed towards the system. Pharmacists never get love or hate. I, I would say I have a positive opinion about pharmacists to the extent where like sometimes if I like get a couple of things at the pharmacy and then um, I also get medicine from a pharmacist, I feel bad because they ring it up. And I'm like, you didn't spend, no, no disrespect to the service industry, but I, I know you didn't spend 12 years in school like in university, to get your degree to be like ringing up my Hall's extra strength cough drops, right? Like that's, you got other stuff on the go. <laughs> Surely you got other things to do. They kind of did. Well, that's why they're so damn good at it. And then I didn't even, I got so many, well, not so many, but I got anecdotes from yesterday. Put the baby down for a nap. Kate says, hey, can you run out and get some cat litter? I go to the, catch my ass, walk into the pet store, minus 12, uh, taking photos of every single kind of cat litter that's in the uh, in the pet store, sending the message to Kate, and she says, "What else do they got?" I say, "Sister, that's it." Then she sends me a picture of the cat litter she wants, and I'm like, "They don't have it." And then, then I'm waiting like eight minutes for a text, just standing in the aisle, like uh, like what the hell am I supposed to do here? Anyway, we figured it out. Then I went to the uh, I went to the pharmacy to pick up something from the post office. I, I hand them the slip that says we have a parcel, they scan it and go, uh, oh, this isn't here yet. And I, oh, okay, cool. Thanks for making me like wait in line for 20 minutes behind uh, a bunch of people after giving me a slip that says, hey, come to the post office to pick this up. Then I go to like, I, I get the cat litter at the pharmacy and then I, I put it in the self checkout and I scan it and I put it on the scale. It says, please wait for attendant. I say, fuck that, no attendant's coming. Then I see them, they're talking on the phone right now. So I go to another self checkout, scan the cat litter, put it on the scale. It says, please wait for attendant. I said, no man. So I took the cat litter and I got in the freaking line. I got in the line to not go to self checkout anymore to go to the cashier. Then I go to the cashier, she scans it, I pay for it. And then I see my receipt print out. She's talking to her coworker about the shoes that she wore to work that day. I'm like, I got places to be. I grab the cat litter, I start walking out. She said, like I get all the way to the door. She's like, excuse me, sir, do you want a receipt? I said, no, I'm good. People wilding out, man. People going crazy right now. And this is pre-thumb. Hold on, we might as well wait till the vacuum's done. Just drink some water.
the vacuum ever done? <laughs> it's, it's a truly nihilistic way of thinking about it. But I agree, that's how it feels sometimes. That's for damn sure. How was the Peloton? It was good. 45-minute Emma Lovewell 90s ride. 526 kilojoules. The real question is how tomorrow's Peloton ride is going to be. I might have to just do a 20-minute a core class <laughs> on, the, on the floor. Yeah, you need your thumb. You need, you need your thumb to hold the handlebars out of the saddle. I mean, if you had like an insane core, maybe you wouldn't need it, but otherwise you need it. It's not like I'm going to fall over, but still, you ride with your thumbs? I mean, you need like your, your whole body, basically. I'm not saying like your thumbs are the things pushing the pedals, but you, you need them. I legit, you could run a normal Twitch stream without thumbs, I'm realizing right now. You don't need thumbs to click on uh, top TikTok videos of the, of the first week of December 2022 and then just like shovel popcorn in your mouth and laugh now and then and go like, we fell down. <laughs> Bro, no. Dude, don't do it. Oh, he fell. <laughs> All right, I got to get started here. <laughs> slash, slash marker. Re how, how am I hitting this? I'm hitting the dude. My brain immediately adapted. I've, I've, I've hit my, just without even consciously thinking about it, I was hitting the space bar with my right index finger. Thank you, brain. Thank you. That's incredible, man. I want you to know that when it comes to like <sighs> streamers who love the job, I think there's streamers who tolerate it, okay? And I'm not like going super saying every single day. Some days I'm like, I'm okay to be here. And some days I'm like, uh, I'm having an amazing time. Like this is the, this is the meaning of my life. But it, I am like an hour and 20 minutes into the stream. We just got started doing normal content. But I dragged my daughter to daycare in probably, like not exaggerating, like the biggest blizzard in Vancouver in, I don't know, like the 10 years that I've lived here, at least is one of the top three, like almost everything is closed, um, walked all the way back and then s smashed my thumb in my own back door due to my own uh, hustle, unfortunately, me being an idiot was like, I'm 30 minutes late, I gotta go fast, ah, tunk, what an idiot. Thumbnail turned completely white, um, so I got it all gauzed up here. But yeah, and I'm and I'm live, and I'm can, can I? I don't ask for it too much. Can I get a little easy clap in the chat? Thank you, thank you. Okay, and it's not like I don't feel like I have to be here. I feel like I want to be here, and. This, like, I know you're on YouTube, you're going to be like, oh, it's crazy how this was like the last video he posted before the thumb infection spread to his brain and killed him. <laughs> but <laughs> hopefully, hopefully that's not the case. Look, it's, it's bad, but it's not that bad. Like, I'm okay. I'm not going to go to the hospital uh, for this unless it starts to smell vaguely of almonds. But anyway, am I the asshole for taking an Uber to a wedding so I wouldn't be late? My sister got married last weekend. Easy claps in the chat, please. I flew into town and my parents insisted I stay with them instead of a hotel just like I wanted. My parents are consistently late for everything. I think it's a Latin thing. I hate being late. I think it's disrespectful. All right, immediately not the asshole. Noon rolls up. And my folks, oh, sorry, the wedding was at 2.30. My folks live about half an hour from the church. Okay, in my head, here's, here's how early people think, Okay. The wedding's at 2.30. My folks live half an hour from the church. You do not, late people will be like, we'll leave at 2. No, that's because you've got to, once you get to the church, you have to park, and there's going to be tons of people parked on the street because it's a wedding, so it might take you a little longer to, to park. And then you got to walk in, and that's when the thing's supposed to start. So you should be in your seat by then. You're not supposed to be walking in at the same time as like the bride and the groom, right? You're not supposed to be walking in and taking your seat in the pew when they're playing the, the wedding march by uh, Methuselah. What's his name? Mendelssohn. So me, if it was me, you live a half an hour from the church. It starts at 2.30. I would want to be there at 2. So I would tell myself I would leave at 1.30 and then my ass would be ready at 1.15 
And I'd be like, well, what am I going to do? Turn on the TV and watch 15 minutes of shit that I don't care about? So I would be leaving the house at like 1.17. I'd be showing up at the same time, like they're still getting the flowers set up. And there would be nobody in the pews. And I would be like, well, even though I'm here first, I'm not going to sit at the front because they're just like a friend of mine. Like that's where the family's supposed to sit. So I would be sitting there like five pews back on the side of the person's family that I knew and just looking at my phone for like 45 minutes. I'm not saying all early people are like, like you don't win. When you're early, you usually lose because you have to spend more time like waiting for late people. And you know, the most messed up thing about all of it is like they're, they're going to say that it's going to start at 2.30, but they're actually going to start at like 2.40 because they're going to be like, this guy's parents are going to be late. So we're not going to start at right at 2.30. So the late people get accommodated for and the early people get, uh, they get it from both sides. But anyway, sorry. It's their daughter getting married? Oh yeah, wait. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> oh yeah, they should have been getting ready at like nine. Your parents are old enough that for a, a special event like this, for your child's uh, wedding... When are you going to learn that your actions have consequences, right? It's, you should have, your parents should have had a moment in their lives up to this point where they were like their lateness was tolerated and then one day it wasn't. One day they were like, I'm going to be 10 minutes late for this thing, but don't worry, it's never a big deal. And then it was a big deal. And then they go, okay, I have to change my life now. I sympathize with the habitually late in the sense that it's always hard to change like ingrained habits. In a way, I feel lucky like, I'm extremely rarely late for things if it's just me. But I'm lucky because that was the lesson that was taught to me by my parents. My mom is even, like, a little bit crazy about it. If they, like, have a flight that leaves at, like, noon, they'll be like, okay, well, we have to be at the airport two hours early, so we got to be at the airport at 10. So we're going to have to... It's a 30-minute drive to the airport, so we're going to leave at 4.38. Maybe we should just sleep in the airport overnight, you know? So that is the lesson that was passed on to me, and I peeled back some of it to preserve my sanity. It is hard to change your habits if you're like if if you're habitually late, I'm sure, but like I don't know, it's like this is the other people have stuff to do too. Maybe your parents are 100? That seems unlikely. Do you know the if you looked at the demographic breakdown of the world, you know what percentage of the population is 100 years old? It's like 0.05% of the population. Everybody knows like one 100-year-old. Think about how many people you know that are not fucking 100. Like all of them, except for, statistically speaking, Aunt Ruth. Are there more 100-year-olds or people that are seven feet tall? Whew. That's a great question. That is, that's a fantastic question. I... Bet there's more 100-year-olds. You could, you could do a back-of-the-napkin calculation. What percentage of adults are seven feet, or kids, I guess, what, like, what are, what's the proportion of seven feet tall individuals? It's got to be like one in 10,000 or something like that, maybe even less. And then how many people live to be 100 years old? It's got to be... Well, I don't know. I feel like one in 10,000 might, might be a bit of a stretch, but I, this is a real question. How many 100-year-olds are seven feet tall? I think I feel pretty comfortable saying the answer there is like probably zero, especially because you shrink as you get older. Lots of people 6'11 or, <laughs> or around there, but... Yeah, also, if you're 100 years old, no one cares. But first off, you're, you, you, the sister would be getting married. No, nobody that is 100 years old has a kid that's getting married where their sibling is contemporary enough to be like, I'll just take an Uber. They would be in a horse-drawn carriage. And it's a fundamentally, you're begging the question. Why are you so slavish to the three-question format? Like, I can see why people would be, like, a little bit annoyed, like, that... Because, listen, you did kind of... You let your parents take the shot. Now, your parents got in front of the bullet, don't get me wrong. The, the nicest thing to do <laughs> would be to show up with them. And then when they were like, why are you late? Be like, why do you think? And everyone would know. Everyone would know without even having to say it. It's the subtext that adults speak with every day, okay? 
But I don't think you did any. You did a disservice by making sure that you made it in time to see your sister get married. You could start to, but here's the thing. So people always say that, you know, if you know there's going to be late people, tell them that it starts 30 minutes early. Though I feel like if I tried that, the one time I did it, they would show up on time and be like, yo, what the fuck? And also now I got to keep like 20 lies in my head. Oh, the latest person, I told him it was going to start an hour before it started. Then like this person's like a little late. So I told him it was going to be 15 minutes before it's, it's just too much to keep in, to keep track of, you know? That is the, th and also you do run the risk of making them the main character, right? Because if they're a late person and you tell them to be there at an early time when it's not actually, like to preempt it, then they're like, oh, well, next time, when I, if they tell me the time, I'm just going to show up 30 minutes later. Because I know you give everybody the, the, the 30 minute extra window at the start. There are 3,007 feet tall people in the world and 500,000 hundred year olds. Okay. Hundred-year-olds win. Now, here's another question. If you put all the people who are seven feet tall on one side and all of the 100-year-olds on the other, who wins the tug-of-war? Might sound crazy. I honestly think I would go with the 100-year-olds even still. I mean, that's like a, 150 to 1. Do you think you could... If, if you were seven feet tall... It's an honest question. We're doing thought experiments, okay? You know why? I'm delirious. Do you, th let's, let's not even assume you're seven feet tall. Do you think you could beat one versus 150, a hundred year olds in a tug of war? Because I, I don't feel comfortable saying that. I think that the average 100 year old is probably more than 1% strong as I am. Which means if you add up 150, I mean, I don't exactly know how the physics work, but all you need is like one 100 year old that's 10% of your strength. And then it's, it's over for you. Let me put it that way. Once one falls down, it's all over. <laughs> Listen, we're verging into slightly offensive territory, okay? If there's any 100-year-olds watching this right now, I'd like to apologize. It's, it's sobering to think of the fact that you would be born in 1922. Think of all the things you've seen. My God. Calvin Coolidge, the presidency of Calvin Coolidge... Did you know that Calvin Coolidge had a, uh, a reputation for being humorless when he was the president? Something that, to be honest, I look back on with a little wistful fondness. I, I wish that was us now. We could use a little bit of that in the modern era. Calvin Coolidge had a reputation for being humorless. In a public relations campaign, he tried to uh, reverse that image and make himself seem a little bit cooler, ironically, by throwing a party on the White House lawn New York Times reported on the party. You know what the headline was? President nearly laughs. I miss the era, man. I miss the era when, when the world's biggest newspapers were just wilding out. Just owning people, left, right, and center. Thank you for asking, Kate. I think my thumb... I, I don't think it's great, but I do think it's... It's not going to be as bad as I thought it was going to be. But it's not great. What happened to it? I kind of smushed it in the, in the back door, like between the, I, I had it where the, the hinge is, and then I closed the door on it by accident. And then the nail turned completely white, and we put some gauze on it. I mean, I've got it, no, someone tried to steal our daughter on the way to daycare, and I went, Wah! Jonathan. I know you're like, you're delirious because of the painkillers. Brother, I took one Tylenol. You know people be waking up with a headache taking two Tylenols? I took one little red, like an easy swallow tab. I do think it's realistic that I lose the thumbnail, though. I don't, I, I, when I looked, like, you, when you take, and I apologize on YouTube, you're probably like, please give us some more, like, content. But this is my content for today, okay? I, the, when you got to use the adrenaline you have when you hurt yourself. So I went upstairs uh, holding my thumb. And I looked at Kate, and the first thing I said is, like, with the, with the most calm demeanor I could muster, I said, don't freak out. I hurt my thumb really bad. And then I just went to the bathroom and started running cold water on it. And then I was, like, I was running the sink on top of it, and she was like, your thumbnail's completely white. And I, I had to resist every uh, impulse in my body to be like, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
But what do I, it's not like she's going to whisper and she's going to be like, mita, huta, fista, and then the thumb's going to be like better. Like, what is she supposed to say? Is she supposed to say, does it hurt? I, I, it's the same thing. I'll be like, yeah, obviously. There's like nothing she could have said where I would have been like, thank you for your healing incantation, right? Kate, stop roasting me. She's in chat going, he just kept saying, ah. Yeah, I was going, I was, <laughs> I did have my head bowed while running the, the sink on my thumb going, ah. I wasn't going, ah. Yeah, but I was going, ah, this is, it, it hurt and it still hurts, but it's not like I wasn't just doing it for, you know, for humor's sake. And then Kate, did I, did you see, I well, mean, you didn't see, then like I was telling the story about crushing my freaking thumb into the door and then Tomo threw up in the corner, like on open mic. And then, so I got up, I got the paper towels and cleaned it. Everyone's like, most cursed stream I've ever seen in my life. And then when I sat back down, I grabbed my muffin to take a bite and I dropped it on the floor. It's like, it's, it's just not my day today. Do you still have your life insurance? Just checking. No, ironically, our, that, that policy has not kicked in yet. I need to have a nurse come to our house and, and take a blood and urine sample. If she wants a blood sample, I'll just stick my hand out the window right now. <laughs> she wants a urine sample, I'll wring out my underwear. Uh, am I the asshole for not wanting my husband to go to his ex's funeral? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Holy cow, this is a long one. Bro, like, she's dead, you won. What do you mean you do he's not allowed to go to the funeral? Can you imagine if it did say she died thumb in door? Oh, man. A couple months into dating, it came up that his friend was actually his ex-wife. Okay, he ex I see. He explained the above to me, saying she was one of his closest friends and it was purely platonic. I expressed some discomfort at him being so close to his ex. And he told me, that's fine. If you have a serious issue with it, let me know and save us some time. I'll choose her. I like you and all, but I've known her for over 12 years and she's one of the most important people in my life. You'll have to be okay with that if you want us to be a thing. Okay. It's, it is kind of a giga chad, but at the same time, like, uh, <laughs> he set his boundaries early and she went with it. When we were engaged, I asked again. He gave me this perplexed look and asked, why would us getting married affect my friendship? I sucked it up and went along. I resented every moment of knowing her, especially when we had to be social. She understood some part of him I couldn't. Her husband was friends with mine as well, so it's not like I could use him as an angle. What does that mean? Why are you using a human being as an angle? This is a fake story? I, I don't know. Would you just give it, give it a little extra time? He'd have lunch with his ex, then they'd go to their geeky movie. Okay, I think you're right. I think this is designed, this is bait, designed to make people upset. As soon as she said geeky movies. Nobody's making a post on Reddit like they're Rachel McAdams from uh, Mean Girls. They'd go see their, their geeky movies, Thor, Ragnarok, and so on, such the Batman. She died after they had lunch the other day on the way to her car. He spent a bunch of time crying, but honestly, I was relieved. You're just like, not, you're, this is made up. I'm, other people might fall for this. I'm not going to fall for this. That's crazy. He spent a bunch of time crying. <laughs> I was relieved. <laughs> oh, 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 man. How about this? Okay, there's the two good ones. Am I the asshole for asking my daughter for help? 11,000 upvotes, certified asshole. Okay, so this is... <laughs> I love this title. Oh, I'm the asshole for asking for help? And then everybody read the post and said, yep, yep. Wanted to clarify two things. I'm her dad. Not sure why everyone keeps referring to me as her mother. Everyone keeps telling me the grade due date is actually the post date. If I was allowed, I would post a link so you could see the calendar literally says December 9th, 19th, grades due from faculty, and December 20th, grades posted. She literally admitted to lying that they were due Sunday today, so I'm not sure why people are so stuck on insisting I'm wrong about that. <laughs> okay. I'm 54 and my daughter is 28. She's home on break from grad school getting her PhD. She's only home for two weeks because she said she doesn't have any more time even though she has a month break. That's been a big thing. Your daughter is an adult, by the way. Your daughter is 28 years old. 
I don't know. Why are you why are you telling me this story expecting that other people would be like, yeah, that seems normal. Wow, dude, yo, dude, your daughter sounds like a total bitch. You're right. <laughs> Get her ass. I got my younger daughter a sweater, and it turns out she already has it. I called my older daughter from work on Friday and told her she needed to run and exchange it for a different one. Bro, buddy, that's your problem. No wonder she's saying she's too busy. You fucked up, and now she's got to go to the mall on, like, December 17th or something like that? She said, okay, she'd do it the next day. I said it needed to be done that day to get the best options. You li Listen, by December 18th, all the sweaters are going to be gone. Everybody knows peak sweater buying day is December 17th. This is crazy. I told her it needed to be done that day to get the best options. She said she was grading, so she can't. I told her it's not like she can't pause her grading, run out, and exchange it. She said she, said she wasn't going to slow down her work and just said that I should do it when I got back from work. I said I was busy, and I don't feel like running out after a long day of work. And she said neither did she, but she doesn't have a long day of work. She's sitting on her, on her computer all day and doesn't even have scheduled hours to work. She can do it whenever she wants. Holy cow. If this is real, this guy is... Uh, father of the year for sure today things really kicked off because i needed her to pick up an online order for a gift for my mom her grandma she again used the excuse of grading she hadn't even started working yet it was in the morning as she was drinking coffee and having breakfast <laughs> oh man this is so good she said that she needs to have her grades done today, but I looked it up on the website because I'm insanely busy. And she has until Monday evening, so I called her on her BS and she said she had other work due on Monday. Oh, apparently you don't just have like one thing to do. Apparently she's got like multiple things to do and not all of them are like listed on the website or something. She had other work due on Monday, so she needed to get the grading done today, but wouldn't enlighten me on what this mysterious other work is because she's 28 years old and honestly, it's none of my business. I said, well, tough. Grandma's gift needs to be picked up today, even though it's like nine days till Christmas. But so all this shit needs to be done today. It doesn't actually have to be done today. If it's gotta be done, I can't even get through the post. If you gotta, if it's gotta be done today, then you do it. If it doesn't have to, if, if it doesn't have to be done today, then you don't, you can delegate maybe, and maybe out of the goodness of their heart, they'll help you out, but this is crazy, man. So I can wrap it, and I was going into the office, so I couldn't do it. She said that if I don't want to do it myself, then it will be done on her own time. I told her with that attitude, she can stay somewhere else. She said happily and packed, she, she said, she called my bluff, and I was like, oh shit, my wife is going to be furious. <laughs> and I tried to walk it back, but she was already gone. I think it's ridiculous that she's throwing a fit just because she can't constantly live like she's the only person on the planet, but my wife and other daughter is now furious with me which I think is crazy, but that's, you know, a subject for a completely different post. I mean, if this is real, this guy is, he's out of touch, and he's also out of time. Number one, you, you, unless you have, and, and this is toddler posting, okay? Please do not describe an adult having enough of being mistreated as a tantrum. Tantrum, and, and Kate will tell you this, is when... My daughter is like, I want chocolate. And I'm like, you can't have chocolate until you get in the high chair. Not you can't have chocolate, but you can't have chocolate until you get in the high chair. And then she spends like five minutes going ape shit. And I'm like, literally, it's a five second chore. Maybe 10 seconds now, but otherwise it's a five second chore that we can do and then we can give you the chocolate. But like the two-year-old brain doesn't understand, you know, the, the cause and effect relationship there, okay? Because she's two. No, I mean, adults can throw a temper tantrum. It reminds me of that lady at Jay Willie's who started to cry when she got served her hamburger on sourdough bread instead of a hamburger bun. Maybe she was just having a hard day. Yeah, whatever, you know, lots of people have hard days. You know what they do? They, you know what make your day easier? You eat the damn, you just eat the damn bread. It's the same chemical composition. Just got a couple extra sour molecules or something. All right, it. I'm eating the muffin that fell on the damn floor, dude.
Hey, it's damn good. What do you mean which means she's allergic to sour? The hell are you talking about? I made that comment up. I just thought it would be funny. They, so I don't, we don't even need to read the comments here because the comments are going to go over the top. They're basically going to tell this guy to, you know, like punch his own ticket. You're the asshole. Am I correct that my daughter is self-centered and childish? Nope, that's a mirror you're looking at. Okay, like, see, that's just the kind of, like, like, this is, what is this, like, a, an insult rap competition? Your mother is so fat that when she sits around the house, she eats more calories than she needs to, putting her at a thermodynamic surplus in spite of her relative sedentariness. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You're the asshole. This must be a joke. First, suggesting that sitting at a computer isn't work slash hard work. This is definitely a Discord admin. I, mods, I didn't say mod. I said Discord admin. They, they've got other stuff to do. The mods are doing hard work. My friend who is a radiologist always works from bed in his PJs and a bag of chips and makes close to $500,000 reading images. My husband is a lawyer, and most days he is in his PJs in bed writing some comments for the top law firm in the country. Do you think if your husband works at the top law firm in the country, he wants you, like, uh, identifying him like this? I'm not saying it's, like, a big deal necessarily, but, like, if you just said he's a lawyer, that's one thing. If you said he's the top law firm in the country, like, we could probably figure out who your husband is. And then, like, I'm not saying it would reflect badly on him necessarily, but some people might find it reflect badly on him. Also, is that true about a radiologist? I thought a radiologist was, like, hand, hang, handling the x-rays, like, in the hospital. Aren't they, aren't they configuring the machine and stuff like that? And then, and then telling you that, don't worry, it's, it's a very small dose of radiation, and then getting in a lead-lined room and hitting a button that goes... And then they just send like the they send the pictures over Discord to someone at home in their pajamas and they go, yeah, his thumb's broken. Not too far from the truth. No, it's not so bad. Not so bad. I thought that's dude, like this is my my whole uh thesis on the medical industry is that you should like um just min max for the easiest job that pays the most money. And I always thought people go like um become an anesthetologist, an anesthesiologist. That's crazy. You got people's lives in your hands. You're like, you know, miss a decimal point and, you know, people are waking up real groggy. I don't want to be an anesthesiologist. I feel like being a podiatrist wouldn't be that bad. You know, you get, you get doctor money. You do see, I'm not saying it's a walk in the park, but pun intended, you're going to see some people's like really messed up feet. You're going to see funguses and you're going to see injuries that'll be, you know, the first couple of months on the job will probably make you cringe until you get desensitized to it. But like, at least you're very rarely, I think, are you going to see someone's foot and be like, you have to break the news that they're dying. You know, you're, you're not going to have to, nobody's coming in with the sniffles and, and getting you like infected with RSV. They're just going, you know, hey, here's my trench foot, you know, <laughs> So you think, I'm not saying you don't have bad stuff come in, but it's, it's at like a relative happy zone, you know? It's, at, it's, at a, it's in the Goldilocks zone. The road specialties are radiology, ophthalmology, anesthesiology, and dermatology. They are considered to have the cushiest lives within the medical profession. Because I'm not saying it's like you could have a cushier life. You could just be, you know, like Paris Hilton or whatever, but... Uh, ophthalmology, I could not do. I could not... I don't think I would enjoy looking at someone's fucked up eyeball. I mean, I don't, I, I don't think I could. Enjoy is not even the right word. And if I had to do, like, a, a eye surgery, that's one of the things I just uh, I don't think I have the stomach for. A podiatrist, I think I could handle... Because a foot is just like... I don't know. It's weird to say. But I don't really consider my feet, like, part of my body. <laughs> They're just like... <laughs> They're like equipment, you know, like, I know they are, but like not as much as like, you know, my eyes are or like my tongue or something like that. A fucked up foot could be gnarly. Yeah, but what's it going to look like? You know, it's going to look like a pretzel or something like that. A fucked up eyeball 
and then you got to shine the light in it, and I'm seeing like little worms swimming behind the, the cornea or something. I can't do that, man. What about foot fungus? Listen, I'm not saying it would be like a, a, the greatest day at the office. I'm just saying in the spectrum of things that doctors have to deal with, I would rather deal with fucked up feet over fucked up eyeballs. I'm glad that there's somebody out, there's a hero out there dealing with the messed up eyeballs. I personally would rather deal with the messed up feet. You never, you ever see a nail curl in? You ever, you ever slam your thumb into a back door? Watch the nail in, in a, a single millisecond turn from pink to pale white? Because I have. Merely one hour and 44 minutes ago, my thumb is, is more a part of my body than my damn foot, by the way. Although, I'll be honest, if I had to choose this injury to happen to my thumb or my foot, I guess I would rather choose my thumb. Because at least, like, your feet have got to be in shoes if you're going outside. At least your thumb can kind of, like, free ball it. Although I might want to wear some gloves. I can always just keep my hand in my pocket or something like that. And the other one is hailing a taxi cab. You've never seen barefoot TikTok? Bro, I watch TLC, uh, My Feet Are Killing Me sometimes. You see some gross stuff. I'm just saying, like, I would rather see messed up shoes than be like a general practitioner and be like, hey, we got the lab results back. You're going to die. All, I'd rather fall on the grenade of like, brother, your foot is messed up. I'm not going to be able to sleep tonight. I'll let some real heroes do the... Like, give the bad, the truly terrible news. Just be out here like, holy cow. You got to dry between your toes when you get out of the shower, my dude. Some of these I'm just not going to touch. Am I the asshole for excluding my parents' throuple party from my wedding? That's one I'm just going to be. I have the shrewdness to stay away from that one. Just one, one too many issues that I don't want to get involved with. I believe a throuple is... A couple of three people. Now, the English language has about 15 words that describe a group of three people. We didn't need to be like, we didn't need to make a, um, a portmanteau. That being said, I, I can't deny that as soon as I read it, I understood what it meant. Why not call it a triumvirate? Does every throuple have a, a Pompey, a Caesar, and a Crassus? Because I, dude, I don't think I would want to be... I would have to get my ass out of there. If I, if I looked and I was like, he's Caesar and she's fucking Pompey, that means my ass is Crassus. I gotta, I gotta form like a new triumvirate, man. I, gotta, I, I don't have to be Caesar, but I at least gotta be Pompey, okay? If you are in a throuple and you find yourself being the, if you look at the other, if you look at the other couple in the throuple and you don't see a Crassus, guess what? You the Crassus. Am I the asshole for exposing my coworkers' bathroom habits? I, 25F, work at a smaller company of around 15 people. I get along with pretty much everyone, the exception of someone we'll call Alexis. Couldn't afford a car? No, okay, let's not go down this. <laughs> Sorry, I keep forgetting. Alexis is very socially conservative, and I am not. I do my best to not talk about some things I know will cause an argument, but they sometimes happen anyway. One time I used the bathroom right after the cleaning crew finished cleaning it and didn't bother putting the toilet seat down because I was just going to squat to pee. Is this common? I'm not, I'm not suggesting this is not okay. I'm just wondering... I'm, it's not how I pee, right? So, like, wouldn't you rather sit down? Or is it you don't sit down because of the, the grossness of the seat? Let me tell you, like, here's what I'm worried about. I'm not worried about, like, my, my thighs being on fire from squatting. I'm worried that, like, if I sat down, I'm confident in the transit of the urine. But if I was squatting over the toilet, I would worry that I would augment the angle of incidence and pee on my jeans. Men will tell you, and I, I'm not sure if this will happen, if, if this does happen to women, because I'm just not familiar... Men will tell you we got enough problems. First off, we've got distance from the origin point to the bowl. But then on top of that, sometimes you'll just pee and it'll be like two streams for like five seconds. Like it'll be like you had the sprinkler on the wrong setting and it'll go like, 
and then it narrows and starts going into the <laughs> starts going in the direction you're pointing. Sometimes you think it's it's gonna have like a laminar flow and it just sort of dribbles out, and you're like, what the hell, dude? That's why I've become more of a sitter, honestly, because the tar the targeting computer just gets it's a little bit messed up. It's just easier that way. Plus, you get to play a couple games of slice and dice on your phone. Honey, are you okay? You've been pissing for 95 minutes. <laughs> Go away. Go away. Go. Cantrip, cantrip, cantrip. Roll, cantrip, cantrip. Poison, poison, cantrip. Gather, cantrip. <clears throat> anyway, one time I used the bathroom right after the cleaning crew finished cleaning and it didn't bother putting the toilet seat down because I was just going to squat the pee. I washed my hands and when I exited, I bumped straight into a Lexus. I apologized and went on with my day. For the next two weeks, I thought Alexis was being particularly sanctimonious, but I didn't say anything as it wasn't too out of character. The subject of women's sports came up during lunch, and she made a snide comment along the lines of people like OP ruin them for everyone else. What the hell? All right, well, we're not going to touch this one either. Um, I'm going to say you're not the asshole. <laughs> I didn't know where that is not how I thought this was going to go. Holy cow. Wait, but then, hold on. Because she gets owned at the end of the story. Let me just see how. I squatted Alexis. The energy of the room got very awkward, so I decided to make a joke. Are you telling me that you park your bare ass on the toilet seat in public restrooms? She turned bright red. Apparently she did, because she started muttering something about not being weird before bursting into tears and leaving the room. At which point, Albert Einstein appeared... Sir, what's the guy's name from the ABC show, What Would You Do? Regis Philbin appeared from behind a curtain and said, You were on candid camera. We were testing people's morality. And you... <laughs> John Quinones? Why did I think his name was Sergio Garcia? So I, I think that, yeah, I think the 22-year-old is, is the asshole here. How could they... Next time it happens? Well, I would love to say... Take, give yourself time and take a decade and slowly expand your palate so that you, I, I promise the water's fine on the other side. Secondarily, if that's no longer an option, because oftentimes it isn't, what you're going to do in this situation next time is you're going to go through a drive through of a burger joint and you're going to eat the food in your car. And then if anyone asks when you come back, just say that you shit your pants and you had to go home and change real quick. That's it. As long as you, you don't need to bring back a, a, a bucket of fried chicken into the party. You just go eat really quick and then, and then come back. No one will question your story if you say that you crapped yourself because that's already like as embarrassing as it could be. He's cracked the code. That's, dude, you can use that for anything. Hey, Johnson, why were you late today? Sorry, sir. I got halfway to work and then I shit my pants. I had to drive home and change. Well, don't. So, Jesus, just take a sick day next time. All right, go, go to your desk. You can't use it every time? Well, no, you just have to escalate. It, you could probably use it like three times in a month, but then after that, you got to start pretending to have like ulcerative colitis, which you should probably should not do because it's immoral <laughs> for one, but also it's going to get, it's going to make your life like mighty complicated. Johnson, put down those potato skins. You know what makes your greasy food makes your irritable bowel syndrome flare up. Oh, sir, thank you. What would I do without you? Son of a bitch. Could have just left the house 10 minutes early that one day. You're the asshole for sure. You should have arranged something. Wait, he's not an asshole. The 22-year-old the is the asshole. I don't know if I'm getting caught up in the semantics or something here, but he's 22. Like, are, okay, is, it depends. Like, is a 22-year-old a kid? Well, like, in the sense that I would trust them to pick their own meal? No, they're an adult. I would expect them to be able to, like, handle the situation like this and, and not fuck it up. That's a pretty small amount of responsibility. Would I trust them to, you know, like, run a company? Well, only if it was, like, a cryptocurrency exchange. What's the worst that could happen? You trust them to run like a business with like machinery and clients? No, of course not. They're 22. Like they got a lot of time left to get the experience required to run like a legitimate business, but <laughs> to run, you know, like the world's 
second largest uh, cryptocurrency exchange? Sure, maybe you just think that could be like their first uh, leg up on the into the into the world of private industry. Am I the asshole for not wanting my ex husband's new daughter to have a complimentary frozen name to the one our daughter already has? Frozen name? I mean, it has to be Anna and Elsa, right? Like it's the only or it's Olaf and <laughs> what's the reindeer? <laughs> Sven, my 31F ex-husband, 35M, got married less than six months ago with his girlfriend, 25F, and she got pregnant very fast. Recently, he told me they were having a girl. I'm a huge fan of the movie Frozen, which is fine. You can be a... I know people are going to be like, Disney adult, Disney adult. You can like a movie. You can bad chest it as well. I think both of those are within the spectrum of normal behavior right now. I'm not offended by either. So when our daughter was born, I wanted to name her Elsa. My husband agreed to that. I know it's a little dumb to name your kids after things like that, but it is not a super unusual or ugly name. It is pretty and it means a lot to me. In the whole scheme of names after media, this is not that bad. I wouldn't do it, but it's not that bad. It, it, it's, it's better than Khaleesi. Exactly. It's better than Dovahkin. Absolutely. Probably a bunch of people in chat right now are probably named Ness. So don't, don't step to me. I would never name my kid Elsa. Okay. Super Mario Koopa, <laughs> Bullet Bill, Bowser, fuck you is what I'm trying to say, you piece. You think you're better than Elsa? She's six. Have some respect. My husband and I divorced when our daughter was three. We don't hate each other, but we're not best friends either. We don't hate each other. I just hate him. The issue with the new baby is that he explained to me that after he told his new wife the story behind the name of Elsa, she, I would have thought that, honestly, she probably could have pieced that together herself, but that's okay. I don't think she needed the step-by-step -step process. <clears throat> she proposed that their daughter should be named Anna so they could be sisters like in the movie. For me, it's totally unfair. They're stealing my naming process from a movie that made $1.1 billion at the box office. What if I have another daughter? It would have been perfect to name her Anna. Hey, guess what? You still can. And now I wouldn't be able to do it without looking like I'm stealing from them. You think you're the first... Anna out there in the world? What about uh, Kendrick, Kornikova, Wintour, Jealous, Los Angeles? You've never heard of her? Overwatch? Yes. <laughs> De Armas? Exactly. Karenina? There's dozens of them. There's dozens of them. My husband doesn't even like Frozen that much. He always said his favorite Disney animated movie was Bolt. That's just crazy. I'm not saying it's like horrendous, but it's not even in the, in the ballpark with the classics. You you take a bolt over like the Little Mermaid, <laughs> Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin, the original Lion King, Jungle Book, Bolt with John Travolta as the dog or as the dad. I can't remember. <laughs> I only know it because it comes up like early when you go on Disney Plus because it's in alphabetical order. I don't know if the mother likes Frozen, but I'm totally sure she doesn't like it as much as me. I demanded to him that they choose another name, but he thinks I'm acting crazy. I called my divorce lawyer, but she doesn't think there's anything we can do about this. My mother just laughed at me. I feel so defeated. My sadness turned into anger, and in an impulse of rage, I called my ex-husband. I told him that if they insisted on using that name, I would make everything I could to sabotage the relationship between our daughter and theirs, so they were never real sisters like Elsa and Anna. You know what's crazy? This is a lot like the movie, honestly. Anna and Elsa were very close. Elsa, you know, as a kid, in, in a bit of a, a, a juvenile impulse, uses magic and accidentally freezes... Anna's uh, brain or something I can't remember then they have to go to the trolls and they you know thank god it didn't get her in the heart because only a true act of love can thaw a frozen heart but then it's really the problem is that the parents keep Anna and Elsa separated leading to them having a gulf just because they're trying to protect both of them it's really it's a cautionary tale about, you know, being overly cautious, I suppose. It's a cautionary tale about caution. It's not spoilers. This is all like, this is the prologue to Frozen. You know, I, I, one of my favorite lines in Frozen is when everything gets covered in ice, everything gets frozen, and then Anna's complaining, and then Kristoff says, you think you got a bad, I sell ice for a living. Dude, actually, like, he put her in her place. I mean, she had problems. Don't get, I'm not saying she can't complain because her sister did blanket 
the kingdom in snow in the middle of summertime and froze all the ships in the port when it seems like their economy is based on trading. But at the same time, like, hey, everyone's got a hard life, lady. Just chill out. My daughter asks me like once a month if they're making Frozen 3. That's cute. I don't know if they will. But it's cute either way. I do like Frozen Who Asked. That is funny. Hopefully not. You know, you could just not see it. You know, Disney will, will do what Disney is going to do, whether or not 24-year-old single men approve of their movies that are targeted for, like, 8-year-olds. It's okay. Not everything has to be for you. You have almost everything. They're putting out, like, a new Star Wars movie or TV show, like, every 48 hours, okay? It's okay. You can just ignore it. It'll be fine. I'm not 24. <laughs> I'm not wearing hockey pants. Anyway, I immediately regretted saying all that messed up stuff, and it is not true. I would never do that unless, but this whole situation has been so horrible for me, and now he's really angry too, which is okay when it's me, but when he's doing it, not very nice. I think that I am ultimately in the right about what they shouldn't, why they shouldn't use the name, but I was wrong in saying what I said. I want to insist on them picking another name without going too far. Am I the asshole? Well, like, listen, I think she's the asshole, but I do also think that they should not choose that name. It would be different if it was like, hey, my grandma was named Anna, and it's just a coincidence. But for them to kind of like force a relationship between the two kids, just because the first one is named Elsa, you know, it's, it's a little bit too much. I think it's definitely weird. I definitely also think that she crossed the line. This is why you don't name your kid Khaleesi and then, you know, be mad if your husband <laughs> knocks up somebody else and they name the kid called Drago, okay? Just because they're named Anna and Elsa too, they don't have to be friends. You can have like a really close relationship with your half-sibling or you can have no relationship with your half-sibling. I don't know, I'm guessing you guys probably live like two houses down from each other, so it seems like you're probably going to be in each other's life, but it's just weird, you know, like... They're literally sisters? Why are you trying to gaslight me into saying I'm saying something wrong? They may never see each other again. I'm not trying to say they shouldn't. They're like, li literally, they're six and like negative two months. Like, <laughs> all I'm saying is there's a lot of variables here. I think they're both a little crazy. I think the husband has a type and the type is crazy. Also, the fact that the mom is saying... I think she likes Frozen, but she doesn't like Frozen as much as I do, is, is the truly insane part for me. Where I'm like, like, aren't you in your 30s with a six-year-old? Like, don't you have other things that are top of mind right now? It's true, I forgot that his favorite movie from Disney is Bolt. So maybe his opinion doesn't hold too much water here. This person might have been on the cruise. It's possible. I don't know. As long as they're staying in a different room, I don't really care. But I will say, people like this are the reason that I didn't make an effort to go to any of the, the trivia days. They'd be like, hey, we're, it's Marvel trivia. Maybe you should go. You could win a free lanyard. I walk by the Disney lounge. They're reading out the, the answers. In which uh, Marvel movie does, is Wakanda first mentioned? My ass is like, uh, Captain America Civil War. Eh, fucking in Iron Man 2. Black Widow says something like, where'd you get that shield, Wakanda? 99% of the people that I saw in the lounge were like, yeah, I got that. I was like, all right, I, I see, I know my place. This is not my, this is not my crowd. They were, I, I need, who played Tony Stark in Iron Man 2? And I'd be like, easy, Robert Downey Jr. You're the asshole, take a cue from your favorite movie and let it go? Okay, that's kind of funny. I'll give him that one. You know why it's funny? Because you, you got to commit to either the own or the, the breaking down. You can't do a breakdown and then an own. you got to choose whether you're going to be like playing the light side or the dark side. A one-line own? I'll give you some credit for that. You're the asshole. Did he ask for your input on names for his daughter? If not, I'm sure he didn't. That is very inappropriate for you to even comment. Let it go, let it go. See, not quite, not quite the same level of panache, but... I'm a huge... Okay, sorry. Your naming process is copying a top-grossing children's movie. If you think you are at all unique or special, or that the names Elsa and Anna didn't get a huge worldwide bump after the film's release, you are deluding yourself. 
You are literally an evil stepmother in a Disney film. That's what you are right now. You are, of course, also an asshole. Okay, listen. There's, there's no point in reading these except to get a little dopamine, okay? It's a Disney adult. She's going to get torched by the internet. And she deserves it a little bit, but it's that doesn't mean I... You know, you, you know what bothers me? I'll see like a video of like somebody falling down an escalator a little bit and then trying to get up and then falling down again. And I'll be like, that was a little funny. And people will be like, you're a horrible person. But then people will like sit there and jerk off to like this kind of debauchery. A fake story that like, oh, I know so many people like this. Okay, no, I don't actually, but I believe that they exist because I think the worst of people. And then I read that, you fucking dickhead, you piece of shit, asshole. Your kids are never going to speak to you again once they turn 18. Send, upvote, upvote, this, this, this. User received Reddit rainbow for this post. And then you go out into the world and you're like, I'm a good person. I'm a good person. I don't watch videos of people falling down escalators and, and chuckle to myself a little bit while also hoping that they're okay. I don't hope that they're injured. Do you, you think you're better than me? That's all I'm trying to say. Am I the asshole for not cleaning up our dog's pee quick enough? Honest question. I didn't know you could clean up dog pee. I thought you just kind of let it ride. No, I mean like outside, not inside. <laughs> dog poop, you clean it up. Well, I don't know. Statistically speaking, like 25% of people clean it up, I guess. But like, you should clean it up. What does your house smell like? We don't have any dogs. I piss in the toilet unless I get the, the wizard split. <laughs> I live with my boyfriend. We have a dog named Kito. He's a Pomsky. <laughs> is, is that like a is reincarnation of Bernie Madoff? Is a Pomeranian Husky? The main problem, though, is he doesn't go to the toilet outside. I've tried whatever I can think of, but he just goes wherever he wants inside the house to pee and poop. We watch him carefully and try to prevent it as much as possible. We have training pads, but he just ignores them. There's a lot more stuff, but obviously there's a character limit. Oh, <laughs> is there? Is there? Is there? Okay. Recently, my boyfriend mentioned he's fed up of having to clean up dog mess all the time and fed up of the smell of it. He's also complaining about taking him on walks and other things. Luckily for him, he works Monday to Friday all day. <laughs> Luckily for him, he works Monday to Friday all day. So while he's working, I look after him. That is so good. One day, my boyfriend was at work. I was still in bed sleeping. I always keep Keto in the room with me while sleeping. And I put a pad in the room in case he needs to, in case he needs the toilet. But like I said, he just ignores it. So he ends up peeing right next to the radiator, which, I, which was on. And well, it smelled really strong and it soaked into the floorboards. When I, woke up, I, when I woke up, I said to myself, I'll clean it. Evening comes and my boyfriend returns home. So when he goes into the bedroom, he gags and asks what the hell the smell is. So I tell him he was angry. I didn't even bother to clean it up. And that I, when I did get up, I still didn't clean it up. He was really upset. He tried to clean it, but it was soaked in. So the smell was lingering and he would not stop talking about it. I said, sorry, but reminded him, okay, this is bait. It's bait. It's a bait post. You're the asshole. You're the asshole for writing this bait post, okay? It is pretty funny. I, you know what it means is I give more credit to them for writing... Luckily, he's at work Monday to Friday all day. Because now that I know that that line is intentional, I have to give them some credit because it's one of the funniest things I've, I've, I've read in a long time, I think. To, to resist the temptation to like lead up to a bit like that, like to a, ascend to it and instead just drop it in the midst of like a lore dump is, it takes some restraint. Am I the asshole for requesting my wife cleans up after herself? Here we go. I, 28M, married my wife, 23F, who we'll call Danny. And her, her brother is Cal Drago, or Viserys. About a year ago, we were very lucky to get pregnant soon after. Danny is in her third trimester now and on pregnancy leave. Okay, well, here's the thing. You're making a Reddit post uh, uh, complaining about your pregnant wife. She's got, a, she's got a bowling ball in her tummy right now. She's got to be, I, she's going to have to be living a very filthy life for people to take her side, okay? Or for people to take your side, I should say. 
Once we got the good news, I started working extra hours in order to save more money for when the baby gets here. That means that I have to get up extra early every morning to get to work. You shouldn't have wrote this part because chat's going to be like, 6 a.m.? That's crazy. I get up at 3.45 a.m. I'm out the door at 4 a.m. Bro, can you imagine? Whoa, to be up at 6 a.m.? What is this, a Sunday? So I'm just going to do you a solid there. You should have left this out. This new routine has been hard on both of us. <laughs> Buckle up, motherfucker. <laughs> this is, uh, you're in the damn pre-show, dude. Get ready. I'm not saying it's easy. I'm just saying it ain't getting easier. So far, everything's been fine. That is until the other day when I woke up to Danny crying. We only have one bathroom, which is downstairs, and lately Danny has been having a little bit more trouble going up and down the stairs. That's usually fine for me, but this time she didn't make it, so when I came downstairs, I found her in tears, standing in her own mess. She was very clearly embarrassed, and even more so that I caught her. I immediately felt bad for her and tried to comfort her, and I told her, it's all good, it can happen to everyone. Just clean it up and we'll go back to bed. She asked me if I could help her clean it up, but I told her that it made me uncomfortable. I would never expect anyone to clean up after my mess. Ooh, okay, that's, see, here's the, I get that you could say it's different when you're changing a baby's diaper because a baby doesn't have the ability to change the diaper themselves, but your ass is going to be like knuckle deep in urine and shit and vomit, and it's not just shit, it's like weird shit, even the normal shits are weird, but like the first few shits are crazy, like they're insane. Um, you are not, if, if this is a real post, you are not ready for this. Plus, like, I'm, I'm just, I'm being completely sincere. 100%. I'm not a pee guy. But like, it's just pee. It's not that crazy to clean up someone else's pee. I'm not a pee guy. I'm not. I'm not saying I would be like slurping it up. I'm just saying if she was like, can you help me? I would be like, I'd already be getting the, the straw out this <laughs> time. I mean the towel. I mean the towel. It's just like it's it's the pee is not that bad. Like on maybe this is I don't want to say controversial. There's like three bodily functions you're likely to see on the floor, okay? In in a situation like this. It's either pee or it's poo or it's vomit. Pee is definitely the least bad for sure. Blood? I mean, blood is also... I would rather clean up pee than blood, for sure. What do you think I am, a vampire? Semen? That's not even... Like, whoop. That's nothing, okay? That's, that's not even a mess. This is an oversight at most. If we're talking about the three most common, you're going to see pee, you're going to see poop, you're going to see vomit. There's no question I would rather clean up pee than any of the other two. Now, I'll be honest with you. I would rather not clean up either of the other two. If I had to, to rank it, I think I would rather clean up poo than vomit. Is my, it, it would, both are not great. It depends on the poo. But like vomit like scars you when you clean it up. Like there's, and it, especially I think when it's not your own, like there's foods I can't eat anymore because like a roommate in college, ate them, got too drunk, threw up, and then I cleaned it up. And then for like the rest of my life, I'm like, okay, I guess I'm not having Swiss rolls anymore. Hold on, someone, this is a definitive source. I was an EMT for six years. Vomit is the worst. Okay, I, I'm glad I read it because you agreed with me. I'll take that. I, she got really mad and called me insensitive for making me clean up after herself after an already embarrassing enough situation. I proposed a compromise she would clean up the mess, and I would get her clean PJs. That is uh, one of the one of history's great greatest deal makers. <laughs> which which implies originally you were gonna let her get her own pajamas since I just done laundry anyway. She asked me if this was what it was going to be like when the baby made a mess, and I told her I'd be perfectly okay to clean up after the baby since it can't clean up after itself. I'm not saying I called it. I then told her I didn't have time to stand there arguing with her all night when I have to get up in like three hours to go to work and provide for us. So I walked upstairs, grabbed her PJs for her, and went back to bed. The next morning when I got downstairs, I found her on the couch. She told me she barely slept and felt horrible about the night before. She called me an asshole and said that by not helping her, 
I only embarrassed her more. She then told me she would be staying with her mom until I got my shit together. It's been half a day now and she's not responding to my texts. I talked about it with my coworkers and I'm getting, I'm getting mixed responses. But I just want to make sure. Am I the asshole? Edit one. So after about five hours, most of y'all seem to agree that I am the asshole. Danny's coming home tonight to pick up some stuff, so I hope we'll have a moment to talk about it then. I'll take you guys' verdict into account going into the conversation. I did see some people who would see my side of the story, so I do hope she'll take that into account too. You just can't, you just can't accept it, can you? Sometimes you just got to eat it, man. Like if you're 85% wrong, you don't need to be like, yeah, but I'm 15% right. You just got to take the bullet on that one. I'm sorry. Like it's, I've been there. <laughs> I've been 15% right. You know what you say? I'm sorry. I was wrong. You know, you don't go, Hey, I'm sorry, but also could you give me like a little credit? <laughs> like that's, I'm sorry, but also some Redditors agree with me. Like you just got to like, if it's 55, 45, you could be like, we're both wrong. And maybe you decide if you want to fight for the, you know, the 50 50. But if you're like, this is like a 90 10, like, you don't need the 10, okay? You need to make up the gulf of the 80% difference there. He also told his coworkers that his wife shit and piss all over herself. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> and the internet, I guess. Um, I didn't really think about that, but that's, that's true. So I have to, okay, sorry. We'll update soon. Um, keeping it brief after word limit, we'll post full update after judgment. Long story short, Danny and her mom came to pick up things last night. We talked. She told me her side. I told her my side. In the end, we both end up apologizing and said we're going to work it out. She's going to be staying with her mom until we find a comfortable way for her to sleep downstairs at my place. Huh? What did she apologize for? For pissing herself? Yeah, she's pregnant. It's, it's fucked up. It's a little shop of horrors. Yeah, throwing up for no reason, thinking like good, good smells smell bad. Like your brain is like a, it's a funhouse mirror. You don't have to apologize for that, for not getting her own PJs. It's crazy. Yeah, you're the asshole. Look at his username. She's pissed. <laughs> All right, maybe he's not the asshole now that I think about it. <laughs> Because that's pretty funny. I remember this one time my husband and I were dating and didn't live together. I got food poisoning and woke up vomiting. I called him frantic because I was being sick everywhere. Couldn't stop and was scared. He drove over in the middle of the night. Cleaned up my bed while I cleaned myself. Packaged me and a toddler up and bundled us up and brought us to his parents' house so I wouldn't be sick alone. FYI, OP. My husband has a squeamish stomach and is ill at the sight, sound, and thought of others being sick. He still totally cleaned up after me alone when it wasn't his house, when I wasn't his wife, when I wasn't pregnant just because he loved me and I needed help. Explain your excuse to me again. Hey, listen, lady. He had to be up in the morning to go to work. Okay? Info. What was your husband, what, your boyfriend, what was your husband, what was your boyfriend doing in the morning? Okay? Was your boyfriend going into work in the morning? Did he have to be at the office at, at 8.30? Because if he didn't have to, you, listen, he had a very important meeting that day to provide for the family I can't miss my daily stand-up or Kurt will be, he'll throw a shit fit in the slack, man. He might work a real job than like, on like software development or streaming, okay? If I'm going down, I'm taking 15% of you fuckers with me. <laughs> Hold up, you told your coworkers about your wife soiling yourself? OMFG, and the fact that a woman in her third trimester would have a terrible time kneeling and getting back up off of the floor. OMFFFG, you're the asshole. Oh, man. I don't know. It goes against the grain of the comments here already, but my judgment, him reading this comment, finally, it goes against the grain of the other comments here, but I'm going to have to say that you're the asshole. Just because she's capable of cleaning up after herself doesn't mean she has to and that you couldn't have helped. Now, I've never been in this situation, but there's been plenty of times when my partner and I will clean up each other's vomit in situations because we have empathy and feel bad for each other. Yes, we could make them do it themselves because they got two feet in a heartbeat, but there's a sense of love and compassion here. Yep. You're the asshole. Please do not compare pissing yourself while wasted drunk to having an accident when you're, a, you're in your third trimester and there's a human pressing down on your bladder and pelvic floor. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, sure, that's true. I keep doing a, a little thumb appraisal. It's okay. 
I can bend it. It hurts a little bit, but not as bad as it did when the stream started. I do think it's conceivable that the nail is going to fall off, but that's okay. What are you going to do? Build a time machine? Don't worry, it won't fall off for a couple weeks. <laughs> Where are you, Christmas? Why can't I find you? Why have you gone away? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to freak out my nieces, dude. I'm going to show up on Christmas Eve. Give me a hug. Ah! And that's why you always leave a note. If you want parody, you would eliminate the salary cap. Yankees fan spotted. Yo, Chibli, Chibli. Chibli, I broke my thumb. Chibli, hello. I got so many anecdotes. What the hell happened? <laughs> I slammed it in my back door. Being mad that I was already late for stream because I dragged my daughter to daycare in a sled in this blizzard. So I like threw the sled outside so it could defrost and then went clunk. It's not actually broken though. It's just a little bit fucked up. Was it the hinged end or the opening end? It was the fucking hinged end, brother. It's all right. I have to, I have to give props to my cerebellum. Because, like, even before I felt the pain, I heard the sound, and then went like... And then looked at my thumb, and then there's almost a sober moment where I was like, This is about to hurt. And I was like, that my brain was like, go to the sink and rinse it really quick. And then, like, while I was going to the sink, I was like, yeah, there it is. <sighs> ah. <laughs> anyway, I'm okay. What an adrenaline rush, though. The pain is right behind me, isn't it? I'm so lucky it was my left hand, man. If my back door opened the other way, <laughs> phrasing, maybe. But if, no! We lose round one. If my back door opened the other way, I could not use my mouse right now. I could only use my keyboard, man. I, would have, I, would, I don't even know what I'd be doing. I'd be playing like, uh, I want to be the guy or something like that, having a, a stroke on stream. And not the good kind. Hello, Josh. Josh, I screwed up my, my thumb, dude. Look at this. I'm a freak. I'm a lover. I'm a child. I'm your brother. I'm a sister. I'm a saint. That is not how that goes. Here we go again with this freaking story. People will literally... I, I suffered like a grievous physical injury. People will be like, here we go again with all the whining. And then I go check your tweets, and they're like, I walked 15 minutes to Jack in the Box today to get a hard taco. I get there, I open the door, I say I'll have one hard taco, and the lady behind the counter said they're out of hard tacos. This is crazy. Is You think I can't monitor everything you write about your life online? You're putting it out there for free. No! <laughs> no! <laughs> Listen, if you don't want to hear about other people's problems, don't talk to other people. Something tells me they'll be happy to meet you in the middle on that one. Minus two, minus two. You know what? How about you minus, how about you, look at this, I'm already minus one. Minus one of my two thumbs. What am I supposed to do with this? Okay, fine. Should I step down as CEO of Northern Lion Incorporated? I will abide by the results of this poll. Yes, 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 yes. Sorry, running it again. Uh, too many options. This is like the eighth time I've used that joke, but I, I really like it. Yo, Dan, thanks for the raid. Dan, Dan, a, 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 a car engine fell on my thumb and shattered it into a million pieces. I was, I, a, a car rolled up on the sidewalk and almost hit me while I was taking my daughter to daycare. I rolled tactically out of the way and then it drove over my thumb. No, I just slammed it in my back door hinge. And it made like a really nasty cracking sound. And then the fingernail turned bright white and then bled a lot. But it's okay. Not the car, not the car engine story again. I've never felt more flattered, by the way. All of my friends on planet Earth have, have joined the stream in like the last uh, 10 minutes. And I just keep getting to show off my, my thumb to the camera. 
you haven't showed me once. I promise. You don't want to see it because you know what? If my thumb got flattened so much, if you wanted to see it, you would need 1D glasses. And they don't even make those yet. So shut up. <laughs> Look, I'm just workshopping some stuff here, okay? My thumb's so flat, if you want to see it, you better bust out your 1D glasses. I thought that was kind of clever, but not everybody seems to be on the same page there. That's if you wanted to see a dot. Yeah, but if I said 2D glasses, then your ass would be like, I'm already wearing my 2D glasses. And then it would be like, well, then what the hell are, you know, 3D glasses? It doesn't make any damn sense. See this? You're a big nerd. Josh, I, I, slammed, my, I slammed my thumb into a, a bank vault earlier today. You're out here abusing me. You know, I, I don't think the next generation is going to make it, Josh. I merely shattered every bone in my thumb. I go live, clearly hands shaking from all the adrenaline in my system, visibly in shock, saying sentences that don't make any sense, dropping my damn muffin on the ground and eating it anyway. You know what they said to me? Go to the hospital. <laughs> okay. I guess I'll just I'll go, go to the hospital and have them use like an x-ray or something and tell me if my thumb's okay. Come on, dude. It's Tuesday. Relax. It ain't that serious. I'm gonna be- well, there's two sides to every story. I would be like a little pissed if I had to get my thumb amputated. But then the flip side of that is it would make for some great content. Until six weeks later when I retired. Would it? Well, I don't know. I, I would like to think that we would laugh about it afterwards. You would probably laugh about it before I did, but I would get there eventually, maybe. Imagine if I won a BR with one thumb. That's damn true. You just lost to a dude with one thumb. <laughs> Jerk off! Love your streams. Keep up the great work. Thank you. I don't know if people know this. I recently experienced a grievous physical injury. So hearing stuff like that, especially while I'm on the injured reserve, means a lot to me. And it really helps me go through my, my rehab and recovery right now. You're being so dramatic. Kate, t Kate, can you please tell Chad, if anything, I was not being dramatic. I was being relatively restrained. Can I, can I get like some, like, did I not come up with my hand and say, don't freak out, but I hurt my thumb really bad. And then was my thumbnail not completely white and bleeding a bunch? And like, that's dramatic. I'm starting to understand why the Joker became the Joker, man. Then watch. At like 8.15 p.m. tonight, she's going to be like, I'm really tired. And I'm going to have to be like, oh, that's so hard for you. <laughs> oh, man. I don't know. I'm just a little exhausted. I slammed my thumb into the door. You're the ass. Yeah, I know, I know, but it was funny. Please make the your thumb the the thumbnail for all of the videos from today. Yeah, that would be funny. That would be a funny time. I don't think his nail will come off. I hope you're right, Kate. I would love to keep my thumbnail. I mean, I know how it sounds. People are gonna be like, yeah, sure. Kate, people actually think I overestimate when like injury or illness and stuff happens to me. Yet meanwhile, every time I'm like, I have a little sniffle, people are like, it's okay to take a sick day, honey. You need to not talk to get better. And yet I like, oh, I had diarrhea 12 times in the last four hours. They're like, what did you do? Did you consider holding it in? So like, I don't want this to be bad because I want to get back on the Peloton at 6.30 tomorrow. I hope, I hope that I wake up tomorrow and it's just a little sore. But I know I, you saw it. I think it's a little copium there, but I hope it doesn't take too long to come back to come back to normalcy. He did put his thumb under the water and say, ah. I had to text my therapist real quick. <laughs> this is outrageous. <laughs>
We're going to hear something different on Kate's stream? No, I think she's just S-posting. I don't like to use harsh language like that, but I think she's just S-posting. I think on her stream, she's going to be like... Uh, she's going to be like, no, it looked really bad. And then she's going to light me up because it's completely my own fault. And I, I want you to know, Kate, that I acknowledged it as well. Like, I, I told people I was annoyed that I left late. And then I, as a result of leaving late, I got home late. And that had me feeling unnecessarily like I was in a hurry, which led me to be sloppy and catch my thumb in the door hinge. At the, by the, when I heard my thumb, never did it even cross a synapse that I was like, this wouldn't have happened if I wasn't late this morning. Instead, I was like, I need to slow the hell down. There was no, I could have just been live at 9.35 with a completely fine thumb. But you know what's crazy? Is that if I had not fucked up my thumb, I would still be pissed off that I was late. So I would have like finished the stream and been like, oh, I'm in like a bad mood because I was like late for the stream and then I got to, but because I fucked up my thumb, it like sorted, it, it reshuffled my brain. And now I'm like happy in a weird way. Like I'm appreciative of what I have after suffering a life-threatening injury like this. You, gee, I can't believe my wife just hit me with who asked. I was, there was character growth. There was a life lesson. And she dropped a who asked on me. I'm going to lose it, man. We also talked about, I'm very proud of the falling up bit. That, that came to me dynamically. How, like, you ever heard of that movie, Falling Up? Or Falling... Sorry, I can't remake it. It's, it's done. Basically, I was saying, when bad things happen, a series of bad things happen to people, some people get radicalized and they turn into Michael Douglas from Falling Down. I'm a, The more bad things that are happening to me, uh, however major or minor they are, the, I think the better I, a person I am, the more I appreciate life. I'm excited for the 1D glasses joke tomorrow. I'll workshop it tonight while I'm asleep and we'll have, it'll go over just like the, how do you get the juice out of the corners of the square, the square jugs, which I, every day I think about cause I pour my daughter some chocolate milk and I'm like, sure it's not juice, but like they've been putting milk in square jugs forever and I had no problem getting the juice out of the corners of that. Yeah, we don't do bagged milk here. Nobody cares about the thumb. People are like, wait, did he just say milk carton? I thought he lived in Canada. The chat activity lights up. I'm gonna look at my Twitch stream summary. He's gonna be like, asymptotal. The limit does not exist. Lindsay Lohan, Mean Girls. You go, Glenn Coco. She drives me crazy. Then I talk about my thumb. People hit me with the Tony Snell. What's your top meme for 2022? Good question. I gotta think about it. I think it's got, I mean, now that I'm looking at them, I, I would definitely say Morbius is the, uh, is the meme of 2022. I think that there is a little bit of, um, there's like a recency bias for, for lots of things, but especially for memes, because memes immediately go from, I don't get it, to this is the funniest thing I've ever seen. And then the long tail is that they become cringe, right? And then eventually, maybe like six years after their moment of nascence, they have like another hump. Like I can has cheeseburger, like fucking kills now. Just ask squeaks. Um, so right now, I think we're like in that post Morbius era where... People are like, ha ha, Morbius, good one. I'm laugh so hard, I'm morbed all over myself. But I think if you look at it like with a sober bird's eye view of 2022, Morbius is the meme of 2022 for sure. Please get to five. You know what? That's the nicest thing I've ever heard. And you're gonna say, why is that so nice? It's because we didn't even run the casino. So you're literally out here just supporting me because you want to see me do well. That's a very nice thing. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. What a, what a, what a wholesome comment. Five's not even that good, but it's still, it still obviously is better than we're doing right now. Casino is up. To Toasty ran the casino. All right, never mind. I take it all back. <laughs> I take it all back. <laughs> he doesn't know about the secondary market. Dude, that's such a good idea. <laughs> What about a channel that just 
watches the stream and runs psycho prop bets on what's going to happen on my stream for when I don't run the casino. Holy cow. That's the the rare time I came up with a Germa bit before Germa. Germa pre-taping a five-hour gaming stream and then going, not actually setting that to ever be live, then playing that and him running the casino on what's going to happen on the stream that he already did while pretending to be an online casino. I could totally see it. He, feel free to steal it. I'm not going to use it. I'd rather just come up with the idea and siphon off like 15% of the credit when you do 200% of the effort, quite frankly. That's rigging the casino? Yeah, if he bets. The streamer can't bet in their own casino. On their main. <laughs> oh, man. Should have seen your face. When you thought that I had the alt account farming channel points to what? Get a, put sunglasses on it? Turn my emotes black and white and put sunglasses on them? Put 1D glasses on them? Imagine the view count if he had only one ball. This, this is not, if you're watching on YouTube, these are not troll posts. Well, they are, but they're from my wife. <laughs> Just be a loose step family real quick. You, oh, you, oh, you can have tight family, but you can't have loose family without a bunch of people posting, huh, in chat? Kate, I don't know if you were uh, in my room when this happened, but at the stream transition from me to you yesterday, uh, the baby came into the room and she was like, Daddy, I want to sit on your lap. She sat on my lap and there were like huhs in chat like this. And she went, Daddy, it's a cat. It's a cat. It was great stuff. Very cute. You got a cute baby. No doubt about that. The only time she's not cute is at dinner time. When she's like, I don't want to eat this. And I don't even want to, Kate, like, my wife makes this, this pasta for her. Holy cow, we got a draw. It used to be like one of the only things we could rely on her to eat. Now, she picks the noodles out of the pasta and just eats that and leaves all the sauce and the meat and the vegetables. Please. When I brought her the plate yesterday, she said, Daddy, it's too saucy. It's pasta. Like we got... <laughs> You can't just eat refined carbohydrates. Like, you're not in college yet, okay? Carol. <laughs> Wait, no. Daryl. I looked my toddler deep in the windows of her soul. And I said, Just try a bite. Just try a bite. Just try a little bit. It's good for you. Don't you want to be big and strong like daddy? Don't you want to have two fully functioning thumbs? Any thumbs updates? I don't think it's gonna um, require hospitalization. Kate, I didn't tell uh, you this yet, but I, I told chat, my mom sent me a text. If you think it's broken and needs to be set, don't leave it too long. It will heal really badly and cause arthritis. Take it from an old person, open parentheses, your dad, close parentheses, big smile emoji. Perfectly crafted text message. Your dad not asked for. <laughs> I was owning a Super Auto Pets game mid when my door, not asked for, slammed itself on my thumb. I don't understand how they make, like, doors that just um, slam your thumb. Would love to know your thoughts on this. And that's not enough. I just I looked at my phone. I got a damn voicemail. I'm sure it's probably the foreign government trying to get me to give up my social insurance numbers so they can ask me to owe you uh, $75,000 in taxes and the only way Justin Trudeau will accept it is via uh, iTunes gift card. Here we go. Here we go again. The government actually called me to tell me my social security number got canceled. Honestly, that's um, a great time for a phone call because I love to receive great news on the phone. As far as I'm concerned, no... No social um, security number. Doesn't that mean no taxes? On the other hand, you lose uh, out on all those incredible uh, benefits that you get from the government. Oh, wait! <gasps> there aren't any! 
to begin with. What are they going to be? Oh, excuse me, sir. I see you're using the road right now. I see you're using the sidewalk. Can I see your social security number real quick? Shut up! Yeah, I don't know. I'm trying to... I need a catchphrase or something. Go suck a thumb. Ryan looks like Larry David. Again, this is a comment from my wife. I think I might have married Larry David. No joke. My friend and I used to watch Curb Your Enthusiasm together back in university. And we would argue like little kids over who's more like Larry David. And like, I was always like, listen, man, like you're a little bit like Larry David, but I'm like a lot like Larry David. And guess what, motherfucker? My ass is Larry David. <laughs> he's not like a bad guy. He's just not, he's not that larry were you bald yet? Absolutely. Larry David mixed with Tim Heidecker's stand-up bit. If I was sitting at the opera for like 20 minutes, the lady's going, la, 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 la. Finally, I couldn't take it anymore. I stood up and I said, Shut the frick up! I love whenever Tim Heidecker posts one of those on Twitter and some of the comments are like, uh, Wow, so this is what comedy is these days, huh? It's, it's just him being angry, wife equals bad, and then people are like, it's a self-aware bit. And they're like, oh, so that's funny? To just get on stage and say things that aren't funny is funny now? And you're like, I don't think you'd get it. Um, emojis in your username? From Green Bay, Wisconsin, no disrespect. Sorry to say that joke might require a little bit. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not, I shouldn't finish that sentence. It's gonna say something about media literacy, anyway. Um, huh? if you're Larry, then I'm Susie. Kate, I don't, I don't know if you've ever said anything more right than that. But like people, like they kind of don't get it. Like I need an influence in my life that is like, I'm definitely losing this one. That is like tough love, if that makes sense. Not because like I go off the rails if I don't have structure. Like I'm capable of applying the structure in my own life, as you know, because I'm like, um, we normally eat dinner at 6.40, it's 6.41. Tick-tock, tick-tock. Like we gotta, my whole day is good. Cause then after dinner, we gotta put the dishes in the sink and then we gotta go to the, we gotta get the baby a bath. And then we gotta by 7.15 when the, and 30 seconds past a minute, we gotta have her in her pajamas. But anyway, I need, I, I actually believe it or not. And listen, Maybe their people are right when they say that the streamer creates the environment that, like, the, the chat reflects the streamer. Because I don't like to be coddled. Like, if I slammed my thumb into the door and my mom was here, I would have to get in, like, an argument. I would have to be like, I don't have to go to the hospital. I know that I love you too, but I don't have to go to the hospital. It's okay. It just hurts, like, a lot. Just let me walk around the kitchen in a circle for 45 minutes, bleed out the adrenaline a little bit, and then like, I promise. Kate was basically just, she knew I was okay, because I was not in tears, although I did think for a second that I might cry a little bit. And then she was like, she just went back to putting up a shelf in the baby's room. <laughs> this is which is not a joke. She, and she bandaged it up, to be clear as well. Yeah, I don't like to be, I don't like to be coddled. I actually, I, I feel like I do better in an environment where I'm the person who feels sorriest for myself. The idea that like, my, my wife would be like checking in like every hour and be like, hey, are you okay? Do you have to go to the hospital? I would be like, get out of here. But then the flip side is that I am that person. Like if Kate stubbed her toe, I would be checking like every hour and I would be like, hey, just checking in on that whole toe situation. So I don't know, maybe like, <laughs> so there's, there's something in there, but it's not for you. Again, that's for the therapist. I don't think we should buy this. I think we should keep a food and then try to swallow. <laughs> I, we should try to swallow the monkey that generates a gorilla. I can't, I can't bring myself to say it, okay? I'm sorry. Because unlike some industrial rock stars, I have a full rib cage. So I don't want to put that idea in anybody's head. 
So you know what we can do? We can try to do today's movie to movie. You know, Atrioc in the back channel hit me with um, his movie to movie from yesterday. He crushed me on the, on the Max Sido one, dude. Or Max von Sido one. I don't want to leak anything here. But he did it in like three steps. He went from the, he went from the King's Man to Jimon Hansu, which is fair, which then took him to Blood Diamond, Leonardo DiCaprio, Shutter Island, Max von Sydow, The Exorcist. That is crazy. I said, how did you know that? He, says, he said, once I knew Max von Sydow was in The Exorcist, I knew I had the line because I quote Blood Diamond ironically all the time. Holy cow. I was out of my element. Speaking of which, I'm out of my element. <laughs> how am I going to do this, dude? So again, I, I'm sorry. I need help on this. I, I, I just need help. Is Jennifer Tilly in the first child's play? I know one person from the Ten Commandments, so I can get out of that. Okay, I can try to get from Ten Commandments to Brad DeRiff. Okay, so how are we going to do this? It's going to be something like, I'm mean, we'll try the Daily Challenge. It has to be, tell me you're an old movie without telling me you're an old movie. You know it's an old movie because all the pictures of the stars are young people. If you catch my drift. Anyway, we go Charlton Heston. And then we got to find a way to Alien Resurrection. Okay? I know that sounds crazy. How the hell is Charlton Heston in movies in 2019? Jodie Foster was in Elysium, which is a science fiction movie. Neil Blomkamp was supposed to do an alien movie at some point. Do you think we can go Jodie Foster? <laughs> but was, was Jodie Foster, was Neil Blomkamp in his own movie? Is he like an M. Night Shyamalan type guy? I don't know. Richard Dreyfuss was in Close Encounters of the Third Kind. That's an alien movie. But can I get from his ass to fucking alien? <laughs> I don't know. Morgan Freeman is the voiceover at the end of War of the Worlds, directed by Steven Spielberg. What he was going to fucking... <laughs> Ben Stiller, he's in The Watch, a movie about aliens. There's no way, okay, Ben Stiller, just work with me here. Ben Stiller, Ed Helms, Sigourney Weaver, Alien Resurrection, Brad DeRiff, Child's Play. Ben Stiller to Sigourney Weaver. Where would you go to get to Sigourney from here? You would go to Celebrity Escape Room, and then you would search Sigourney. Not there. You would search Ed Helms and connect through Cedar Rapids. You would find Sam Worthington. You would find Zoe Saldana. You would find other people from the movie Avatar. Yeah, I don't know them, okay? Other shit Sigourney Weaver's been in. Or other people that have been in movies with Sigourney Weaver. Paul Reiser. Newt. Bill Paxton. Bill Pullman. Musical guest. Tenacious D. Sigourney, Sigourney, Sigourney. She was in Heartbreakers with Jennifer Love Hewitt. She was in Heartbreakers with Gene Hackman. I can't really imagine Gene Hackman being on Celebrity Escape Room. How about Ray Liotta, who's also in that movie? Okay, not, not there. Sigourney Weaver. She's done movies. She was in Galaxy Quest with Tim Allen. Sam Rockwell. Justin Long? Okay, take me back to Ben Stiller. We can get from Ben Stiller to Justin Long. I think it required... Was Justin Long in the watch? No, but Vince Vaughn is in the watch. He was also in Dodgeball with Justin Long, who is with Sigourney Weaver in Galaxy Quest which takes us to Sigourney Weaver, which takes us to Alien Resurrection, that is not spelled right, which takes us to Brad the Riff, which takes us to Child's Play. Okay, that was a long trip. It just took us a, took us a minute to get there. Wait, Ben Stiller was also in Dodgeball. That's a good point. Wait, who? Who did he play? The leader of Globo Gym? Bro, he has a mustache. Ben Stiller doesn't have a mustache. You're going to tell me Ben Stiller played White Goodman? That was Tom Selleck. That can't be Ben Stiller, man. What are you talking about? I'm sure there's a much faster way. Don't get me wrong. But 
and I needed the help to begin with. Dude, I'm so pogged up that my thumb is not broken. That's gonna be like a huge not debuff. <laughs> That's crazy. It's the adrenaline? It's been like five hours almost. Well, it's not really a buff to not have a broken thumb because we're coming from a, a, a thumb that was doing good work. You should still get it checked out. I agree if we lived in a world, like if, if this was the 1950s and you could be like, doctor, I just crushed my thumb. Can you come to my house and give it a look? Then that would be a, a smart thing to do. In the modern world where um, getting something checked out here means you go to an urgent care before the doors open because if you're there five minutes after they open, they're like, oh, we're at capacity for today. And then you sit in the waiting room for 10 hours anyway. And then they tell you, uh, can you bend it? And then they're, you're like, yeah. And they're like, okay, go to Costco and buy some ibuprofen. Um, or like, oh, so if it really starts to hurt, you should go to the emergency room. So then you go to the emergency room and then you get triage down to the bottom of the list, which makes perfect sense. But you end up waiting there for 16 hours and then the doctor comes in and says, hey, slugger, how you doing? I heard you hurt your thumb. Then they take a look at it for five seconds and go, yeah, it doesn't appear to be broken. Why don't you just go home and get some rest? If we lived in the world where... I'm not saying a world where doctors were better. I'm saying a world where they, there were more doctors, honestly, I guess is what I'm trying to say. That's what I'm trying to say, a world where there were more doctors. But unfortunately, we can only allow people who got a 98% in undergrad become uh, doctors. Because if we start letting people that had a 97% become doctors, I mean, you don't even want to know the degradation of society. It would, it would take you... Six months instead of uh, 10 years in order to have a doctor's appointment. And absolutely no degradation of service would, uh, would apply. But do you want the person who got a 97% on their MCATs to be your doctor? Do you really want someone who's, who's wrong with hyper-specific questions about uh, which enzyme causes this problem? 3% of the time and then goes into general practicing where really you're just telling people to lose 15 pounds every 95% of the time they come to your office? Anyway, sorry. <laughs> anyway, I think Kate's live. I'm going to send you over there. Have a nice rest of your day. I will be live tomorrow. Enjoy the rest of your evening. I'm going to record some Super Auto Pets and I'll see you next time. Later. It's morbing time. Speaking outrageously, I eat some blood. My name's Dr. Michael Morbius. I practice my craft. Oh, I am not quite morbing. Oh, I am fast in bed. Sorry. <laughs>